This is Jared from Commit Quality, and in this video, we're going to cover behavior driven development, which is also known as BDD. It's a way of enhancing collaboration and communication in software development. What is BDD? Well, it's a software development methodology that plays a crucial role in the success of projects. BDD is a methodology that emphasizes collaboration and communication amongst all stakeholders across the business, and it helps ensure that software development focuses on delivering value through the behavior of the system. So let's talk a little bit about BDD then. It focuses on the behavior of the system from the user's perspective. And unlike traditional development approaches that focus on implementation details, BDD emphasizes the desired behavior of the specific system. It incorporates principles from test-driven development and domain-driven design to align technical implementation with business requirements. There's a few different phases and you can see it on here now. So first phase would be discovery. And this is where you have collaborative discussions amongst your key stakeholders to identify features and define scenarios. This could be with a business analyst, designers, developers, or known as engineers, cross team testers. They all come together and you do your discovery session. We just touched on the define where you'll actually talk about business rules. You've then got your formulation phase, which is this phase here. And this is where you start writing scenarios using the given when then structure, also known as the Gherkin syntax. And that's to describe the behavior of features. Once you've formulated your scenarios, you then enter the automation phase. And this is where you start automating scenarios with your executable tests to ensure that the behavior it has been implemented correctly. And of course, you have the delivery phase, also known as the review phase, where you're going to review and refine scenarios based on feedback from the key stakeholders and, of course, from the test results themselves. What's really important here is everyone is coming together to define these scenarios so everyone across the business can read and understand these. And and essentially, you have your executable tests, which also act as a form of living documentation about the application you're testing. So there's plenty of BDD tools as well, which I wanted to touch on. So you can see here, I put an image of Cucumber, which is a popular BDD tool that supports multiple programming languages and facilitates the collaboration between stakeholders. Specflow is a BDD, a common BDD tool for .NET developers. Once again, just like Kugaba, allows us to write these scenarios in our natural language whilst also allowing you to automate tests. And you also have things like Behave, which is a BDD tool for Python developers that integrates seamless with popular testing frameworks like uh, PyTest, for example. So there's plenty of options out there for tools you can use for this. And of course, Rec and Roll is a new one for .NET as well. Now, one thing I want to touch on is BDD tools are not BDD. They are just the tools created specifically to aid the use of the BDD process or the methodology. So when someone says, I'm using Cucumber, that doesn't mean you're doing BDD. It just means you're using a tool that helps encourage that behavior-driven development. So what I'm trying to say is just because you're using these tools does not mean you are actually doing BDD. I, wor I worked in many different teams where the tools are used, but the process is not really followed. And that can cause many issues in the long term, which we'll come to discuss um, shortly in this presentation. Now, you can see this image here. We have an example of a specflow rec and roll feature file. And when you're formulating your BDD, you'll create it in this specific language known as Gherkin. And this language has key terms that you will see across all different tools. First of all, we have the feature. And this feature is a representation of a piece of functionality that delivers value to the user. But you tend to have a description here where you could say, as a user, I would want to do something so I can, so I can be confident in X feature or however you want to write it. Then we have the scenario here. And a scenario is a concrete example that illustrates the behavior of a feature. You can see here we have some keywords of given when and and then, but the three main ones are given when and then. And this is used to define scenarios. Given describes the initial context, when describes the action or event, and then the then statement will describe the expected outcome. It's a ubiquitous language. BDD encourages the use of shared vocabulary. That means it doesn't matter who you give this to, Anyone can understand what this scenario is supposed to do across all key stakeholders. It just allows that clear communication. 
no, there's plenty of benefits, and you've got more than this. But I've tried, I've tried to sum up the key ones that stick out in my mind. First is improved communication between stakeholders. You're using a common language and you're focusing on the behavior. That also means you have enhanced collaboration between your developers, your testers, and any business stakeholders, leading to, once again, a better understanding of the requirements. And what's really good for these are three Amigo sessions where you could have a developer, a tester, a business analyst, and you can all discuss a user story. You can you can talk through it from from a behavior-driven development standpoint. And that usually then encourages discussions, bringing up more scenarios, things you might not have thought about if you weren't using this framework. Free Amigo is also really good at keeping your meetings scoped small to just the people who really need to be in there to discuss this kind of behavior of the system. And you can alternate them if you have multiple testers, developers in teams or business analysts. You can obviously alternate, meaning you're not going to get that meeting fatigue if you had all of your members in the same meeting because you've got all of your team members in one meeting i think if you do bdd correctly you have a clearer understanding of the requirements once again that's through concrete examples provided by the scenarios that you formulated it's been proven that it helps with early detection of misunderstandings and errors which means that then reduces the cycle time and the cost of rework which should in theory enhance product quality now there are also challenges to bdd First is cultural resistance. Some team members may resist adopting BDD due to a lack of familiarity or comfort with the methodology. You have to try and overcome the, this resistance by having someone who has a strong knowledge of BDD, maybe provide some training for the team, and having, once again, clear communication about the benefits that BDD can bring. With BDD tools, that also brings maintenance and overhead. So, of course, you can write your test scripts just using JavaScript or C Sharp or your chosen language, and you don't need to maintain your feature files because you wouldn't have any. So that's the first point. You have an extra level of maintenance, but it also acts as your living documentation. Also, when you're writing and maintaining complex scenarios, it can be really challenging. Scenarios tr need to be kept concise and focused to avoid becoming too verbose and, of course, difficult to manage. It does take a little bit more time formulating your features and scenarios, but done rightly, like I said, in the long term, it can reduce your rework time. And just like any other tests as well, you want to make sure keep good scenario quality as well. So over time, scenarios may become outdated or irrelevant as the software evolves. It's essential that you review and update scenarios to ensure they accurately reflect the current behavior of your system. It's easy to just update the code behind your your scenario without actually re-looking at the scenario thinking, oh, this has actually changed. I need to reword this a little better. We briefly mentioned it as well, but there can be a skill and knowledge gap. Implementing BDD effectively requires a certain level of skill and knowledge, both in terms of the methodology itself and the tools that's being used for automation. So you... To overcome this, the best thing is by providing training and mentorship to members of the team that are not so familiar with the methodology or the specific tool that you're going to be using. Last but not least, we have tooling limitations. While there's many tools available for BDD, like we just kind of discussed, each do have their own limitations and their own kind of quirks. Just touching back on the skill and knowledge gap, you may need to invest some time in evaluating and selecting the right tool for your specific needs. Now, there's plenty of documents out there about the different tools comparing them and i'm sure you'll find it very simple of course i'm going to be creating videos on bdd tools which will hopefully help with this but it's something you want to identify when you're trying to convince your your team to work with the bdd methodology and hopefully that's give you a, a solid understanding of what BDD is and BDD tools. I will be creating, like I mentioned, some BDD focused videos and that's with it with the tools in practice. So definitely hit that subscribe button to keep in the loop. I would also recommend the Cucumber book and the BDD books as very quick reads. I have no affiliation to these, but I found these books extremely insightful and they, they've they fairly quick reads as well. They're not large draw drawn out books. They get straight to the point. If you have found this useful, please hit the like button. Drop a comment down below if you want more videos like this. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.